Hello and welcome, I'm Marumba. thank you for joining me. Let's play some Pillars of Eternity. This is um, definitely, in my opinion, the uh, the spiritual successor to many fantastic um, computer-based Dungeons & Dragons games like uh, like Baldur's Gate, Icewind Dale, all that whole that whole genre of, of games. And uh, I'm very, very excited about this. This game comes out on March 26, 2015. I actually had the privilege of taking a look at the game at ParadoxCon 2015, about a month ago and uh, got to talk to the lead developer and like grill him about every little bit of the game mechanics and it's been a month now i've forgotten everything i asked him so we're gonna dive in and play this game blind together and uh just kind of experience the story the lore and uh the obviously beautiful soundtrack you can hear in the background and go from there now um as much as i like to min max in games like this i don't if i don't know the mechanics like really really well I kind of actually just want to experience the story a little bit more, so we'll try to play as optimally as possible, but I can't make any big promises because, uh, well, I don't have the mechanics memorized yet. Now, you could create, I think it's up to like six characters in your party from scratch. We're just going to create one because I want to like kind of get engaged and involved in our hero and uh, Five wagons not get too bogged down. Blindly for the path on a starless night. Their master glancing ever upward to the skies for assurance that he is on the right course. A dim lantern, his only protection against the encroaching darkness. But the skies bring no comfort, shining no light, betraying no hint of what they know. The caravan carries travelers bound for the frontier hamlet of Gilded Vale, you among them, where a local lord has offered land and wealth to settlers from abroad looking for a fresh start. You have taken suddenly ill, sweating and shivering, and one of the other travelers signals for the caravan master to stop on your behalf. He pulls up just in time to avoid plowing into the trunk of a fallen tree that bars the way ahead. You will go no further tonight. Hmm. So already we're a burden. Hmm, that's not good. Now again, this is a blind let's play. I have I've literally gone through character creation one time and like just checked sound levels and stuff and that's about it. So I have no idea what we're in store for. All I know from looking at uh, the game during Paradox Con is that it, it looks pretty cool, pretty gorgeous. And uh, if you like Dungeons and Dragons, if you like the D20s and the and the dice rolls and the just, you know, character creation and all that stuff, this game is going to be for you. So we're going to play as a, a male character. And I've already done a, um, a quick little um, dwarf name generator because we're going to play as a dwarf because I like dwarves. They're cool. Um, we could play as the humans, which are, uh, you know, folk, apparently. Um, they have a might and resolve value. We'll look uh, a little bit closer at these values here in a moment. We've got the Aumawa. Uh, Aumawa. Okay. Truly, aqu not truly aquatic. Interesting. Dwarves, elves, the Orlin. And then there's this, this uh, like, race class called Godlike. Um, there's, like, four different types. We're not going to do those. Uh, I'm sure we'll encounter them and learn a little bit more about them as we play. But we're going to make a dwarf, and his name... Oh, we have to choose. Uh-oh. Do we, do we want to be a mountain dwarf or a boreal dwarf? Mountain dwarves originated on the continent to the east of the of the dire wood and have spread through the area several times. Unlike the similar similarly diminutive Orlans, who are frequently subjugated, the Aptapo have always directly fought back threats posed by larger kith and opted to fortify their residences rather than move on. Mountain dwarves are common in the Valian republics, but not uh, seen as often as Direwood and Riedsrus. Hale and Hardy, Mountain Dwarves, have a bonus to defend against poison and disease. Okay, and the Boreals, they live in a remote southern island where they share the rocky tundra and snow-covered forest with migratory pale elves and the coast-hugging ships of the Aumau. Like their northern cousins, they share an instinctive lore of love of exploration. Okay, Hunter's Instincts. Boreal Dwarves gain plus 15 accuracy against any creature of the wilder or primordial types. Well, let's go, let's go with the basic one. We'll be Mountain Dwarf. Well, you know, hardy constitution. Also, we, I, I didn't look at it a second ago, but we actually have a bonus to Might, a penalty to our Dexterity, and a bonus to our Constitution. So, like most tabletop games, these, these values are going to be kind of, kind of logical. Might represents a character's physical and spiritual strength, brute force, as well as their ability to channel powerful magic. During interactions, it can be useful for intimidating displays and acts of brute force. In combat, it contributes to both damage and healing, as well as fortitude defense. 
So this is kind of interesting because it's it's not like you know intellect controls spell damage and your strength controls physical damage. It, it seems like they've kind of lumped them together. You've just got a might score, which is kind of interesting. Dexterity is an abstraction of a character's hand-eye coordination, balance, and overall grace. In interactions, it can be used for slate of hand and fast reactions. In combat, it affects the character's attaction or action speed with all attack spells and abilities, and contributes to the reflex defense. And of course, constitution is going to be related to health. It is a combination of the character's overall health and stamina. Although it is not used much in interactions, it is sometimes checked to withstand pain or endure a physically taxing ordeal. It affects maximum health and endurance and contributes to fortitude defense. So we're going to be resol like you know a resolute little dwarf. It's going to be good. And we're going to play as a mountain dwarf. Like if the music had continued. So now we have to choose our class. We can be a barbarian. He looks pretty awesome, gotta say. Brutes, madmen, berserkers. Those city dwelling barbarian or city dwelling people often use the term barbarian with a dose of disrespect. These rural warriors are respected by their communities. All right, so carnage. When barbarians hit with melee attacks, they automatically make reduced damage attacks at all other enemies within a short distance of the target. That sounds awesome. But we gotta look at these other ones too. Cypher. What does a cypher get? Cypher can directly target allies and enemies with a powerful soul-focused effects. These powers cost focus, which cyphers can build through the use of their soul whip. That sounds too complicated for me. A chanter. Phrases and chants. Nope. Druid. Nope. They've mastered the one animalistic form. All druids have mastered one animalistic form. These forms give the druid strong melee abilities and grant an additional power while the druid is shapeshifted. They have access to a variety of offensive and some support-oriented spells. Every two levels, they automatically gain access to an additional set of spells. Okay. So what do we... Which what What is our animal form? I would like to know. As druids gain power, their weaker spells eventually shift to per-encounter use. So it's kind of like a caster that can transform. I love druids. I loved druids in World of Warcraft. It could be... Could be me. This this could be our character. Um, fighter is just a bit too generic, I think. He looks cool. Monk? No. Priest? No. Rogue? Ranger? Wizard? No. I'm, I'm really... It's a toss-up for me between Barbarian and Druid. Now, if I was to play as a Barbarian, I would almost have to name the character Fredegar. And I don't really want to reuse that character just because we use him all the time. So, I think we'll play as a Druid. Let's, let's give Druid a shot. See how that goes for us. Oh, we get to choose. Excellent. So, spirit shifts. All druids have mastered one animalistic form. Do we want to be a spirit shift bear? Draws upon the druid's natural connection to the bear, temporarily allowing him or her to assume that form. The bear spirit shift has a high damage reduction and can invoke a terrifying roar. Modal. A modal ability is one that causes an effect to occur continuously while it is active. For example, a paladin's zealous auras grant bonuses to everyone near them as long as they are active. Modal abilities are often grouped so that only one modal ability can in a category can be activated at any given time. So we can only turn into a bear. We can't turn into a bear boar or something. That makes sense. Once per encounter. Set number of times per combat. For example, an ability that has three uses per encounter may be used three times in a single fight. So we can turn into a bear every combat. Cool. We're going to turn into a boar. The boar spirit shift regenerates lost endurance and inflicts damage over time. The cat. Naturally fast attack and can burst into even faster attacks. That sounds awesome. Stag. The spirit shift stag has higher defenses and can attack groups of enemies with a melee carnage attack. And the wolf moves quickly and has an attack that can knock enemies prone. Prone, of course, being on the ground. Prone characters can't take action. Their dexterity is reduced by two and their reflex and deflections are reduced by ten. I like the idea of cat just because I want some offensive. I just, this is cool. It's a little tiny cat, a little dwarf cat. We're going to pick the, uh, let's make sure we've picked cat. Yes, we have. Okay, good to go. Next. Next up, we're working on, uh, oh, it's awesome. It's awesome. Charm Beast. Apparently, we can cast Charm Beast. We have 15 whole points to spend on our Might, Intellect, and Resolve, and Constitution, Dexterity, Perception. So we've kind of already looked at a few of these. It's, it's, it's giving us a clue that Might is highly recommended for Druids. That's what that Gold Star and Silver Star are representative of. Highly recommended for Druid. Uh, intellect represents a character's logic and reasoning capabilities. In interactions, it can be useful for deduction, sudden realizations, and problem solving. In combat, it contributes to the will defense. Well, I don't want to make like a character that's too too extreme with any one attribute, but we'll, we'll kind of follow the guide. Let's do something like this. We'll go, we'll bump everything up by one um, that doesn't have a star, 
And then we'll go two on the, the, the silver star, and then three on the intellect and on the might. And that leaves us with four more. Um, we'll go an extra two on our primaries. We'll go an extra two, yeah, even more. So we'll really, really focus on the ones that it recommends. I have no idea. Again, practically blind let's play. It's fine. Don't worry. Next, uh, our culture. My goodness, there's so much to choose. Okay, uh, this is going to affect our culture. It gives us something. So we just picked these things. And now, apparently, if we choose this culture, we get an extra one point of resolve. Dexterity, resolve, intellect, constitution, might, perception. The Living Lands is the mountainous region of a large northern island renowned for its diversity of plant and animal life. Its weather is unpredictable, and its ecosystems vary dramatically from valley to valley. Okay, sure. Let's, uh, we'll stack might. We'll be a fierce little dwarf. I like it. Uh, and then we have to choose a background. Okay, so survival. Survival allows characters to make better use of the food and potion items they find. The higher this character's survival skill, the longer the duration of such items. Survival can also be used in cons conversations and scripted interactions that involve wilderness challenges. This game is so cool. Uh, stealth and survival. Hunter, stealth and survival. Lore, survival. Athletics. Lore and mechanics. What does mechanics do? Traps and locks? Nope, that's not our character. Lore represents a character's accumulated miscellaneous knowledge and trivia. I feel like a dwarf, uh, like a, a druid should know about lore. But we'll see, okay. Lore and mechanics, again, over here. Kind of interesting that they've got, like, multiple ones that have the same effect. I'm wondering if maybe there's a, like, a bonus stage or a later effect that you get that's more, more kind of involved than the initial bonuses. Mercenary, athletics. Adventuring is tiring work. Traveling, fighting, scrambling, up falling, and fallen statues can take its toll. Um, counters the effects of accrued fatigue, allowing characters to go farther and fight longer before they suffer penalties. Okay. I, I kind of like this one. I like the lore athletics. That's cool. Stealth. I don't know so much about that. I think we go with... Uh, let's go with... Um, the mercenary. Athletics and lore. Sure. Okay, now we get to choose our colors. So we have a primary color. Uh, that one's going to be what? Outer coat, okay. Secondary color is probably going to be the trim. Oh no, it's our pants. Interesting. Okay, well let's wear some you know, brown pants. We accept. Skin color. We'll just you know pick a color. It's fine. Hair color. Um, white hair. Hell yeah. He looks awesome. Now we have different types of facial hair we can choose from. Obviously we want to have a man beard. The bigger your be the better your beard, the cool cooler your character and, and stronger he is in combat. That's just how it works. So we want facial hair number ten. I do kind of like these ones with the, the braids. They look pretty sweet. Now let's go with that one. Like that. Change our head a bit. Okay, that's kind of cool. And then the actual hair. Crazy man hair. Yes. All the yes. Absolutely. That is a druid, if I've ever seen one. Uh, he's going to need a port. That does not look anything like him. I have a feeling that our portraits are not going to look similar to this dwarf. Let's see if there's a single portrait with a mohawk. Or like a cat. Or a bear. Well, these are, these, these are actually like related to the class that they are, though. Looks like we're going to have to go with the generic dwarf portrait. Okay, I guess so. Sure, why not? Yes. Follow me. Onward! Quickly and quietly. Oh? I've got this. After them! He sounds kind of like Rick and Maru. A blade in the dark. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's got to be sinister. It's just too good. We're going to go with that. And his name is going to be, um... I think it was Arlen is what my, uh... Let me let me check my my thing real quick. It was Onfrey actually. So somehow Arlen changed into on or Onfrey changed into Arlen. I'm gonna go R Onfrey Onfrey the Druid Dwarf. Let's go. Let's do this, Leroy. Journey to the Gilded Vale. Okay. Caravan Master 
Finishes addressing the group, his bushy red mustache and sagging jowls quivering as if for emphasis. Everybody stays close to the wagons, got it? Stay out of the woods, and beasts take you if you were planning a stroll through those ruins up there. Sounds good. Let's do that. Whole area's crawling with hut-dwelling types who'd be happy to stick an axe in you for trespassing. So mind that you don't track mud on their sacred blazing rocks. He's just, he's telling me to go and side quest. Tonight, everybody <laughs> stays put, and in the morning we'll get the path cleared. Gilded veils less than a day out. Understood? Okay. Much of the rumbling rot could be. There's a stinging beetle around here carries it. You'll be fine once it passes your innards. Unless you don't drink water, of course. In which case you'll be dead in a day. There's a berry grows in these parts, small and pink. Called a springberry. About the size of a fingernail. Give you cramps if you eat it, but the frontiersmen make a tea from it. Calms the insides. Should get you through the night. You might check around, see if you can find some. Meanwhile, I'll see if we can scare you up some water. Okay, so we're sick. I know you want to hunt before it gets much darker. But see about refilling our water first. Got a sick one here. Where would I find these berries? Okay, I like this key bindings. One, two, three, four, five. Cool. Um, is it dangerous out here? Uh, no, we're not a little pansy. Let's go. We're just gonna go find Hold some berries. On. Take someone with you. I know you're not some helpless tenderfoot. Not like most of this lot. But you drop dead. I don't want to be looking for the body. Got a schedule to keep. Okay. Kalisha. Kalisha! He needs to find some spring berries. Watch that he doesn't drop dead. No promises. <laughs> well, that's reassuring. What kind of guide says something like that? Exactly. That's what I said. Kind you can afford. <laughs> she sounds so mean. Don't listen to her. You're in good hands. And I pay too well, if anything. Off with you. Aiden should have supplies. See that you're equipped before you head out. We're in harsh country. Okay, so we Get go your to... Get hurry back. And if you get so much as a tickle of wind, you drop everything and you run. Something in the air tonight. If it's a beowick, we'll shelter in the ruins. Hut dwellers be damned. Oh. Collect some spring berries to concoct a remedy. So, um, alright. I think we can, yes. We can use the, the keyboards to, to zoom around. Well? There's our dude. Um, now this is isoteric, I think is the term for it. Or iso... Uh, what's the term? It's like... Like, the background is, like, frozen, right? And it's top-down. It's, it's like a bird's-eye view type thing. So, um, it's very, very reminiscent of, like, Baldur's Gate and other types like that. And it's, uh, it's fine. So, mean? this looks like our friend Kaliska. Hmm? Well. There is Onfri. Okay. Your party always consists of your character and up to five additional companions or adventurers while the caravan is camped outside the Glanfathen ruins. Odema has assisted, assigned Kaliska to help you. She's a fighter. Class that excels at close quarters defense. Use her abilities to complement your own. Oh, wow, how did it know that I just finished? Just, I don't need you to tell me these things. All these, all these super basic things. Let's turn into a bear! Or a cat. Spirit shift cat. Do it. Cast it. Well? Cast it. Cast it! Ah, we're not in combat. Okay. You heard the man. Let's get going before you what feel is over. It? As you wish. Okay, so we're looking for a guy. That's a caravaner. We're looking for a specific guy. Is there like a, a key I can... Yes, if we hold down tap. Look at how intuitive the interface is. Oh my god. Again, I have literally never played this game before and uh, I can I can just intuitively find... Yeah, I love that. So you can see the highlightable items. Hey, there's the guy we're supposed to talk to Anyone for supplies. supplies. I've got sundries for sale. Can I steal? Can I loot? Can I take your stuff? No, I'm gonna take that. It's all mine. This is my stuff now. Thank you. Anything else that I can take? Yeah, we got boxes. We totally inspect stuff. Now, I like being able to just see interactable objects. I don't like having to manually find them. We got some dire wooden clothing. It's got a DR of zero, which um, I believe is the damage reduction of zero. Right now, we're wearing light armor. Uh, we're going to take everything. I'm a looter. Uh, we need somebody with one mechanics. Quest to edit a moment's... Okay, so, okay. Requires one mechanics or zero mechanics and one lockpick. Do you have any... What you uh, need? Any mechanics, woman? Where's your stats? Character, C. What's your mechanics score? You have mechanics of zero. Damn! So I can't get in there, is that what you're saying? What is it? Well, boo. Well, let's go, uh, we'll talk to Heodan. Okay. 
Brought a whole wagon full of goods to sell, but not enough shirts for the road. Say, is there anything you need? I've got some base. Yeah, what do you got? Okay, so I have, um... Stores allow you to trade, sell your items for copper pieces. Or items in a store's inventory. Merchants buy items from you at greatly reduced price. If you sell something, you may see it appear in the store's inventory with a much higher cost. Stores periodically refresh their, their inventory. Gotcha. Well, I don't need this, so how do I sell? Let's see. Uh, so, okay, 75 copper pieces will go our way. This is his way. Got it. Um, so we could trade that thing that we just stole out of the, the box for a crossbow. Um, well, first off, do we even have any weapons here? Just give me some money, and let's go check out our inventory. We do damage. We have... We have a sword. One-handed, average speed. Interrupt of 0.5 seconds, average. Okay. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, is I'm going to take a look through some of these stats, see if I can make some sense of what's going on in here first, and then we're going to dive back in in the next video. But because this is the very first video in a new series, if you want to see more things like Pillars of Eternity on the channel, make sure that you do leave your support down below. It does help out quite a bit. And um, I will see you, I hope, in the very next video. So, as always, thanks for watching, and I will see you again soon.